So we'll, yes, go ahead. Uh, I've got the Al uh, Khatib Al Harra News Channel. Uh, I have uh, a question about your comment on the visit of the Israeli Minister of Security to Al Aqsa, especially uh, since uh, many Arab countries that have signed Arab Accord uh, denounced the visit. I have uh, another question related to your comment on the political reapproachment between Turkey and the Syrian regime. Sure. So let me say broadly on the first question that the United States stands firmly for preservation of the historic status quo with respect to the holy sites in Jerusalem. Uh, we oppose any unilateral actions that undercut the historic status quo. They are unacceptable. Uh, the president has previously underscored the need to preserve that historic status quo at the Haram al-Sharif Temple Mount, uh, as has the secretary. Uh, we have done so repeatedly with our Israeli partners. We have done so uh, repeatedly with our Jordanians par Jordanian partners, whose special role as custodian uh, of Muslim holy places in Jerusalem, uh, we deeply appreciate. That is a message we will continue to reinforce. The second question, please. Can, can uh, we continue with the Palestinians? Sure, and I'll, I'll come back to that <laughs> second question. Okay, I mean, look, you, uh, first of all, uh, happy new year, happy new year. everybody. You constantly state the same statements and so on, but there is no action. You know, and if you continue to do this, this is what we will do. So what will you do if they continue to do this? I mean, uh, Abbas just called on his ambassador to the UN to call for a um, Security Council meeting, for instance. Will you support that? Will you support the Palestinian effort at the Security Council to pursue this issue? Uh, Said, look, we affirm your position. We are going to take actions, and we are going to use our voice in a way that serves to de-escalate tensions. That ultimately is what we want to see happen: a de-escalation of tensions. We all know uh, that <laughs> tensions uh, within Israel, within the West Bank, have uh, become inflamed, uh, not only over uh, recent days, but of course uh, in recent months. And we've pointed to that. Uh, for many months now, included, including the unprecedented levels of violence that have claimed far too many lives, including uh, those of children. Uh, as I said before, regarding this visit, uh, we're deeply concerned by any unilateral actions that have the potential to exacerbate tensions, uh, precisely because we want to see the opposite happen. We want to see tensions reduced. Uh, we want to see uh, tensions diminish. The, we know that the exceedingly rare instances of previous high-profile visits to Haram al-Sharif Temple Mount uh, have only exacerbated tensions. This is not an academic question. Uh, we have uh, seen what has transpired in the past, uh, and we continue, as I said before, to strongly support the long-standing historic status quo uh, at the site. Uh, by the way, uh, we also know, and we took note of the fact that Prime Minister Netanyahu's governing platform calls for preservation of the historic status quo with relation to the holy places. Uh, we expect him to follow through on that commitment. Uh, the Secretary has said uh, very clearly before that it's absolutely critical that all sides exercise restraint, refrain from provocative actions and rhetoric, and preserve that historic status quo at Haram al-Sharif Temple Mount, uh, both in word and in practice. Uh, that's what we'll be watching for. That's what we'll be uh, using our words uh, to uh, to encourage. You know, Ned, uh, just let me remind you, and if you allow me a couple more questions on the Palestinian issue. If, if I may remind you, back in, in 2000, September 2000, September 28th, as a matter of fact, 2000, Ariel Sharon stormed uh, Haram al-Sharif and launched a one of the most violent episodes in Palestinian uh, Israeli history that went on for a very, very long time. We see the same thing happening again. I mean, Mr. Sharon went on to become prime minister at the time. Ben Khatib may become the next prime minister. You said you're going to judge these people by their action. I think you said that, the Secretary of State said that, everybody said that in government. So that is the action, this is the action. How are you going to deal with this government? Uh, well, first, uh, Saeed, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu has said repeatedly that he is setting the policy of uh, this government. We will be dealing directly with Prime Minister Netanyahu. We uh, already have um, been dealing directly with 
uh, senior representatives of uh, the prime minister. But uh, your point is precisely the one I alluded to just a moment ago. This is not an academic question. Uh, we know the historic uh, historical analogies, the historical corollaries, uh, and that's why we're deeply concerned. Uh, we are deeply concerned uh, by any unilateral actions because, precisely because they have the potential to uh, exacerbate tensions or or worse. Uh, and that's why uh, you know we can uh, look back to 2000. We can look back to, to previous instances. Uh, it's also why uh, we call for the preservation of the historic status quo. Uh, it is a, a point we've made to our Israeli partners. It's a point we've made to them uh, as recently as, as, as recent hours. Uh, it's a point they've also heard from their Arab neighbors, including uh, the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, again, mm -hmm. uh, whose special role as custodian is custodian of Jerusalem's holy sites. Uh, we deeply appreciate. Uh, so this is a question we'll continue to discuss uh, with our Israeli partners, uh, with other uh, Arab partners, uh, as well as part of a broader effort to de-escalate tensions that unfortunately uh, have only uh, have only uh, sharpened uh, in recent months. Well, today the Israelis killed a 50-year-old boy. Adam Ayad. Do you have any comment on that? I mean, this is a daily occurrence. So this is this is unfortunately reflective of the dynamic I, I was just alluding to. Uh, we continue to be deeply concerned uh, by that very intensifying violence in the West Bank. Uh, we reemphasize the need for all parties uh, to do everything in their power to de-escalate uh, the situation, to de-escalate tensions. Uh, it's vital that the parties themselves take urgent action to prevent what would be an even greater loss of life, an even greater tragedy. The loss of a single life uh, is a tragedy, but unfortunately the loss uh, of uh, and the level of violence uh, between Israelis and Palestinians has uh, reached unprecedented levels uh, over uh, recent months. Uh, we've seen this sharp an alarming increase in Palestinian and Israeli deaths and injuries, including uh, those of numerous children. And we continue to emphasize that uh, Israelis and Palestinians, as you know, uh, deserve to have equal measures of security, of prosperity, of opportunity, uh, and of dignity. That is at the heart uh, of our approach. Uh, our approach continues to be one that seeks to preserve the viability for a two-state solution. We will uh, be quite clear in opposing any steps, any unilateral steps that set that two-state the prospects for a two-state solution further back. Sorry, can you just to cut to the chase on this? You, you talk about how you're opposed to any uni unilateral actions, um, and and that you support or oppose any ch effort to change the status quo. Um, so, do you believe that this visit? alters the status quo in any way? Look, Matt. And, and, and do you not support it? Do you think that it was a bad idea? Would you prefer that it had not happened? Uh, this visit has the potential to exacerbate tensions and to provoke violence. Okay. Uh, as we said, we're deeply concerned by any unilater unilateral actions that have the potential to do that. So yes, uh, we're deeply concerned was by there, this visit. Now, when it comes to the historic status quo, it's not for me to define from here what the historic status quo is. It's not for the United States uh, to prescribe what the historic status quo is. That's a question of history. It's a Certainly question you know for the historic status it's, quo. Is. It's a question for the parties themselves, including the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, whose, custod whose role is the custodian uh, of Jerusalem's holy sites. Again, uh, we deeply appreciate. Do you know, if the administration made it clear to this uh, to the prime minister or to this specific minister that um, this visit would not be appreciated and would, would draw some kind of a negative response from, from, from you guys? I, I am not aware that we've had any direct contact with this particular minister, uh, but I can say that we have had conversations with our Israeli counterparts in the new government, uh, including in recent hours. Right. And then the last thing is you said that we are going to, this is a quote from you, I think, my notes are correct. We are going to take actions and use our voice in a way to, as to reduce tensions. So, what 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 actions? This is a follow up on kind of so this this kind of a follow up yeah. on something because it sounds like uh, you're using your voice to say something. You know, 
something negative, but 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 certainly there's no there's no consequence at least from the, the U.S. position. I'm not, not saying there should be, but there doesn't seem to be one. So what actions are you going to take? So this gets back to our broader approach. We want to put the parties back ultimately on a path that can lead them to move forward uh, towards the prospects of a two-state solution. And I think you look at the track record of this administration over the past now two years, and you see that uh, we have taken action that attempts uh, to infuse uh, a greater amount of opportunity, a greater amount potentially uh, one day of optimism, uh, especially when it comes to the Palestinian people and our re-engagement with the Palestinian people, including in the form of our humanitarian humanitarian assistance, uh, now providing about a billion dollars of humanitarian assistance uh, to the Palestinian people, working to provide them uh, with additional opportunity, encouraging steps uh, that do that, uh, opposing steps that set back the prospects uh, of a two-state solution. But uh, the other element of this is uh, working to de-escalate tensions. In some cases, we've done that uh, in the background, in a, a, a day-to-day uh, fashion, that is what we're doing right now. But uh, you can go and uh, think back only to May of 2021 now, uh, where we worked intensively uh, with Israelis, uh, with our Arab partners, uh, with our regional partners, uh, to bring an end to what had the potential to be one of the deadliest conflicts between uh, Israelis uh, and uh, Palestinians in recent years. Uh, it turned out to be shorter in duration uh, and uh, to uh, call victim uh, to fewer lives because of the concerted efforts that the United States, together with our regional partners, including Egypt, including Qatar, including uh, our Gulf partners, took. Uh, to put an end uh, to this conflict. That's also part of the recipe. We would like to be working on an affirmative agenda to bring additional levels of opportunity uh, to Israelis and Palestinians, recognizing that Israelis and Palestinians alike deserve to have equal measures of security, of stability, uh, of, of opportunity, of dignity. Uh, unfortunately, in many cases, uh, our role is working to prevent the exacerbation, the escalation uh, of tensions. And that's what we're talking about today. Can, can this administration, can your department define what does equal measure mean in this particular case, please? Uh, e, sorry, e, what, what is equal measure? Equal measures means... Why equal measures to Palestinians who are under occupation, being targeted every day. I mean, you began by saying Mr. Putin could end this war now. The Israelis could end the occupation now. Equal measures of stability, of uh, security, of prosperity, of opportunity, of dignity, uh, these are only likely to come about uh, as we're well along on the path towards what we continue to view as a two-state solution and the importance of a two-state solution. Uh, our goal in the interim, Saeed, is to help set the conditions uh, so that we can one day make advancements down that path. We are under no illusions that that is going to happen this week or next week or next month. Uh, it is our goal to take steps, incremental as they might be, and to encourage the sides to take steps, incremental as they might be, uh, to keep the prospects of that end state alive. Uh, that's what we're focused on. Uh, anything else on this before? We'll take one more question on, 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 on this. Um, you mentioned that uh, there's been conversations with Israeli counterparts in recent hours. Can you give more detail on who that was with, was it with, was it with the Prime Minister's office? Did you explicitly raise this visit to the mosque and were you reassured by the response? Uh, I'm not going to characterize what we've heard precisely from our Israeli partners, but I can confirm that uh, we have had direct conversations today uh, with representatives of the Prime Minister's office uh, regarding uh, this visit. And the message we've conveyed is uh, entirely consistent with the message I've conveyed to all of you. Uh, Kylie, go ahead. Real, real quickly. Okay. Um, uh, the new foreign minister there, Cohen, said on Monday that uh, Israel plans to talk less about Ukraine, and then he um, had a conversation with foreign minister, Russian foreign minister Lavrov, has not yet had a conversation with the Ukrainian uh, foreign minister. So I'm just wondering, you know, what the Biden administration's response is to that. 
Well, I would note, it's my understanding that Prime Minister Netanyahu did have a conversation with President Zelensky and his Prime Minister, uh, obviously, uh, the, uh, the Prime Minister is the pivotal uh, player when it comes to Israel's foreign policy. Uh, look, we're not going to speak to Israel's policies, what those policies are or what they, what they might be. Uh, our position remains clear. Uh, Russia's war against Ukraine is a violation of international law. It serves as a global threat uh, to peace and security. <laughs> Uh, and will support Ukraine for as long as it takes. There are any number of countries, dozens of countries around the world that are supporting Ukraine in different ways. I would note uh, that Israel uh, has supported Ukraine uh, and the humanitarian needs of the Ukrainian people. When we were in Israel last spring, the last time Secretary Blinken uh, was there, we in fact uh, were given a tour of uh, a command center that uh, the previous Israeli government had established to uh, provide uh, medical care uh, to Ukrainians who were injured, uh, who were affected by uh, this violence. Israel has provided humanitarian funding uh, as well. Uh, I'm uh, under the impression that approach is not going to change, but again, I uh, would refer you to Israel to comment on that. We have a question on that. Um, in terms of Israel potentially playing a role or seeking to play a role um, in conversations down the road between Russia and Ukraine. Do you think that there's room for them to do that with this new government? This is a question for Ukraine, primarily. Uh, Israel, of course, uh, has a relationship with Ukraine. Israel has uh, a relationship with Russia. Uh, Israel's relationship with Russia looks different from the relationship the, the United States uh, has with Russia. That's OK. Uh, That's we're. So? I'm sorry? Just, can you elaborate on that? How so, Jeffrey? Well, obviously, there, there are different interests uh, that the Israelis have. Uh, I will let them speak to their interests and uh, the details of their relationship with Russia. But uh, we've, con we've consistently made the point that a number of countries around the world have engaged with the Russians in an effort to bring about an end to their illegal, unprovoked, unjustified war. Uh, there is nothing wrong with communication. We have communicated with our uh, partners in the Russian Federation when it implicates uh, our core interests. What matters much more to us, rather than the fact of communication, is the nature of the messages that are being conveyed. Uh, and if Israel or any other country has the ability to help bring about an end to Russia's brutal aggression against Ukraine, uh, that's something we would welcome as long as the terms of that effort uh, are acceptable to our Ukrainian partners. These are ultimately decisions for them uh, and not for us, not for any other country. Yeah, may I follow up on this? Uh, uh, go ahead, Alex, and then. Thanks so much. Israel in the past expressed its uh, interest in sabotaging Iran's nuclear plans. As well, as given Iran's increasing efforts to supply Russia with uh, drones, just in 48 hours, you know, Ukraine has shut down. Uh, 90, near 90 Iranian metros. Um, is it a subject to a discussion between the US and Israel to, you know, boost up their cooperation against Iranian metros? And also, the administration expresses interest in creating, establishing extensive task force to uh, figure out how the US or Western um, materials are ending up in a Iranian drone make factory. Mm -hmm. Is this a subject to, uh, to, to those phone calls between the US and uh, uh, we have absolutely had discussions with our Israeli partners regarding the threat presented by Iranian UAV technology and the proliferation of Iranian UAV technology to countries around the world, including uh, to Russia. Um, this has been the subject of conversations between senior State Department officials. It was a topic of conversation between uh, Jake Sullivan uh, and uh, his counterpart at the White House just before the holidays. Uh, and. As we've made clear, we have taken steps using our own authorities that seek to disrupt uh, this proliferation network. Uh, we have designated uh, Iranian individuals and entities. Uh, we're continuing to look for targets uh, that uh, meet the, uh, that would be satisfactory in terms of this uh, authorities that uh, we have at our disposal. We're looking to harmonize our approach uh, with countries, allies and partners. Uh, around the world to see to it that we are taking a coordinated uh, approach to disrupt this pipeline of technology from Iran to Russia and other uh, malign actors. Yeah, on why Russia is stepping up to Olympic. And perhaps I should also ask how. I'm sorry, what was the question? Well, why is Russia stepping up uh, its drone attacks in the past couple of days? What is your assessment? Uh, you, you would have to ask 
that question to Russia. Uh, what is clear to everyone is that uh, President Putin's war aims have uh, been a failure. Uh, they have been a failure since the earliest days of this conflict. Uh, the advances that our Ukrainian partners have made uh, in recent months and recent weeks uh, have again uh, put a spotlight on the failings that we've seen from the Russian Federation. Uh, whether this is a case of uh, pure barbarism and vindictiveness uh, or something else, uh, I, I'm not in a position to characterize that, but what I can say uh, is that the Russians are increasingly turning uh, to critical infrastructure, to energy targets, to civilian targets, uh, and that to us reeks of barbarism, desperation, and ultimately uh, a failing strategy. Uh, 